Hi, everybody. Welcome to this Ask Me Anything on uh, Yellowfin White Labeling. Um, we are uh, trying something a little bit different today in that uh, instead of uh, beating you to death with PowerPoint and showing you a bunch of slides on the product, what we thought we would do is um, actually give you a chance to just come up with questions. So the format we're going to try out here is I'm going to talk about the product for a little bit, specifically around white labeling features. And then uh, once we get uh, a little bit of an overview of that, uh, we're actually gonna turn it over to you to just bring your questions to the table and, um, and we will you know, answer them as you see fit. We, uh, we actually thought this would be pretty valuable because in, in my world, I'll introduce myself a little bit. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Chance Coble. I, uh, I'll be running the Ask Me Anything session today. And I started working with Yellowfin a little over 10 years ago and I spend most of my days uh, doing analytics implementations and I work with Yellowfin and I do um, uh, product build outs with Yellowfin. I, I help people integrate it into their applications or use it to front uh, data analytics products. And so um, I get, I, I think the, the biggest value that I get out of it is that I get to completely sidestep that activity of developing a custom web application every time I do some new data product. I can take something like Yellowfin, I can put it in front of the data analytics and the um, and the, the information that I'm ready to present, and then I can align it with the style of the business that is wanting to put it in front of their audience, be that customers or an internal audience for decision support, and then um, create something that really looks like their own product. And I don't have to do any web development, I just basically um, you know, use something like I can use Yellowfin, I can white label it, I can align it with their style, and I can align it with their logos, and I can make it really look like their own product, indistinguishable, in fact, from a product that they would create. So um, that's kind of what today's session is about and how I got into it. Um, if you are looking for a way to possibly try Yellowfin out, you're you're maybe in a little bit of a trial period where you've downloaded the product and you're not really sure how to create that kind of business justification uh, for it. Or you're maybe thinking about downloading it, but you're not really sure about the project you wanna use. I'd like to use sessions like these and today's session specifically to try to inspire you a little bit with some ideas about ways you can grab this product and put it in front of information so that you can show an internal audience something that's a really cool pilot or proof of concept that really helps you kind of build that momentum with something like this. You can completely sidestep that uh, web development even if you if you like with a product like Yellowfin. So I'm gonna talk a little bit here about Yellowfin white labeling, how it works and what some of the features are. Uh, and I'd say that's gonna take another maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And then once I do that, I'll turn it over to questions and you can just come you know, with your questions, whatever you have you wanna ask me about related to Yellowfin of course. Um, if you don't want to ask about white labeling, but you have some other question you want to get into, be happy to try to answer that as well. Okay, so each of you should see the screen that I'm sharing here. And uh, um, one of the things that we want to kind of start out with is that Yellowfin prides itself on extensively being able to style the product. And so when you create a dashboard in Yellowfin, unlike many other dashboarding tools, you've got this kind of free form capability to design content. And that means you can actually bring images in, you can bring the colors and backgrounds in alongside with your analytics. And then you can create this pixel perfect kind of representation of the information you really want to tell a story about, um, which allows you to um, you know, create something that's much more crisp and pops for your audience. So when you edit a Yellowfin dashboard in this freeform canvas style, you're looking at something that's much more of a, almost a Canva style or Adobe Illustrator style content liner. You can go over here, you can bring in your reports so that along with your narrative, you've got that live data. You can bring in filters, text, graphics, images, and even widgets like custom HTML or video. Once you get that kind of stylized content concept and maybe plan something out for your proof of concept or pilot with Yellowfin, 
Um, I recommend as soon as you install Yellowfin, pop right into the content settings under the administration tab. From there, you can go to the little bar chart icon here and you can set the color defaults for your reports. That's gonna be an important detail because you can align this immediately with your style guide. So your company's colors, your company's logos, all show up here as you start to set these configurations on style. That is the first step in white labeling is making sure that first, when you log into the product, it aligns with your style guide. Now, when you first log into Yellowfin, even once you've aligned it with your style guide, the product itself is still Yellowfin style. You log in and you see what seems to be Yellowfin's product, right? And we wanna change that. We want it to be indistinguishable from your own product or something you would have created. And so, you know, one of the first things that I like to point out to people when they install Yellowfin is that if you go to um, the folder that it's installed in, there are these custom CSS and custom images folders. This is a really cool thing that Yellowfin does where you can basically put style sheets in there, you can put images in there, and those images will override anything that's already in the product. So if you log into Yellowfin and you have put elements in here, they will actually show up to change the style of the product and change any logos that are showing up in the product that are, um, that are what you wanna to show to align it with your own brand and style and make it look like your own product. The, another really cool aspect of this is that these are multi-tenant. They support multi-tenancy. So if you put tenant folders underneath this for either style sheets or for logos, then as your different tenants log into Yellowfin, the different client organizations you might have log into Yellowfin and they're seeing their own data, their own compartmentalized view of the data you wanna show them, they're also seeing a compartmentalized view of style. So they're seeing all the style you've put in here, but they're in addition to that seeing their own logos and if you've put it in there, their own style sheets. Another aspect of this that I'll just show you really quick. I've got my own install here of Yellowfin that I, I <clears throat> excuse me, I have quite a bit. And so I'm always experimenting with this and doing different things with Yellowfin here. And one of the things that um, I think is worth showing you in a white labeling discussion is that if you want, you can really extensively turn this into your own product. And if you go into say, for example, the configuration, and you go into this link icon here, you can change the header in Yellowfin to be whatever header your custom style uh, depends on. And that is a, a application level integration because you can put your own links back to your application and using the single sign-on functions in Yellowfin, the features in the API, you can essentially create a session with Yellowfin when somebody authenticates with your application in the background so that you can go back and forth between Yellowfin and another application and you can actually um, have the user be completely oblivious to the fact that you're going back and forth between Yellowfin and your application. If you have an application that does some kind of automation, but you wanna add an analytics component to that, this is a great way to do it. And so we come in here and we can say, change the header to be this. If we want, we can go into the toolbar here and actually completely disable it. And in my case, I've done that so that I can specifically go back to say the dashboards, but I can replace it with my own menu. So I'm no longer using the Yellowfin menu. I've created this one for myself so that I can navigate around Yellowfin, but I'm using my own applications menu. Finally, if you wanna do something that is much more of a you know, custom application, this is a much larger, more technical effort, granted, because you're gonna have to get into Yellowfin's APIs in order to make this work. Um, Yellowfin has a, a broad array of JavaScript APIs so that you can embed content. And so we start out using the single sign-on feature that I was talking about earlier. And in the background, even though this is an entirely separate application, in the background, we're actually authenticating with Yellowfin. And we're calling on Yellowfin data in a couple of different ways. One of which is we can call on Yellowfin's APIs to give us the data for a particular report that this user should be seeing, but we can embed it into our own container. So 
we're using our own UI for this. We're putting our own filters in place, which we're using the Yellowfin API in order to implement. And then, <clears throat> and then filter data. And then we're actually displaying it through our own container. Or alternatively, we could use the JavaScript API in here so that we are um, telling Yellowfin in an almost jQuery style uh, API, render this report in this HTML element. And so this HTML element here is actually showing the Elephant report as it should be seen. And the cool thing about doing that is that you actually get all those nice interactive elements that you get uh, and, and capabilities that you get in the Elephant dashboard, like drill and drill down, and assisted insights, and even signals. This, of course, is a, a, a much more extensive exercise than what I was showing you in, in terms of putting the product together in a way that is um, just white labeled for yourself. So if you kind of review what I just said in your, in your mind, thinking about one of the things you can do is just a simple white labeling of Yellowfin. You can go into Yellowfin, you can change the CSS, you can change the logos that are shown. And on the one hand, you can actually just turn Yellowfin into your own style and brand, and then you can show it to your customers or to your internal audience or whoever you're doing this proof of concept for. That's very simple, and it's great for those proof of concepts where you're trying to justify or trying to understand a way that you can show that this tool is valuable in your organization. The second way is you can do that application integration, and that application integration is the one where we actually go in and change the Yellowfin menuing, the headers, and possibly even other styling around the product so that it looks like our own um, product in the, you know, in the, in, the, in the demonstration that we're doing. In addition to that, you can go much bigger in terms of using the Yellowfin API and its underlying automation features so that you can use single sign-on and the JavaScript API so that if you already have a web application, you can very quickly uh, start bringing in Yellowfin content into that application um, I would say that this one, you know, is only a more extensive exercise because it requires you to call on the Elephant API. The other two that I showed you really don't require people with um, extensive development or technical expertise. They're, they're very simple to just change the style of the product and make it look like your own and then possibly integrate it with an application where you're actually going back and forth with Yellowfin. In this case, you're staying in your own application and what I'm showing you here, but you're using the Yellowfin API in order to bring it in. That's more of an integration story. And I was gonna to keep today about white labeling because I think it's so, um, so much more relevant to people who have downloaded Yellowfin and they're trying to look for ways to uh, quickly show a product that looks like their own and don't necessarily wanna to assign a bunch of technical resources to it, but they wanna actually create styling on the product so it really looks like something they created very quickly on top of their data. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to um, questions. So please feel free to go ahead and submit questions. I'm going to leave the product screen up here so that if anything requires me to, um, you know, just kind of go through and do a demonstration of, um, then I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. So someone asked how to handle um, single sign-on and make sure that we're not going back and calling on that single sign-on over and over again. In other words, verifying that we have a session. Let me see if I can give you a little demonstration of that really quick. I don't have anything prepared, but I have some stuff that I've done recently. Uh, so if we go back to this kind of version that I've hacked, and we go into administration. Oops. Go into configuration. And I turn off that header I just created. There we go. Add the toolbar back in. So now we have kind of more of a normal Yellowfin instance where I've got my normal Yellowfin menu back. There we go. 
And now what I want to do is see if I can go in here and hit a page that I created that was for logins. Let me see if I can find it really quick. There it is. So in order to answer your question, here, here's what I'm doing. I, I have in here some example code that's actually provided by Yellowfin when you install it. And so if you want to get into this programmatically, if you have that kind of technical background and you want to um, possibly get into this in a way that is um, um, actually accessing that single sign-on API, Yellowfin provides you with that code when you install it. And it comes in under these uh, it's a development fol folder essentially where it provides the files and you can just drop the files into the root folder of the web application. And when you do, <clears throat> and you enable a couple of configuration items, those will pop up with a token that you're, that you're getting here that allows you to log on to the product. Once you've done that log on though, there really isn't anything else to do. Um, that token logs you on on behalf of a user I'm using a development license, so I get the not resale language. But that token logs you on on behalf of a user. And once you are logged on, that session is created. You don't need to go back and regenerate that token unless you receive the you know, session end screen again. It absolutely, Isaac asked if it was uh, possible to have different styling for different client organizations. Um, it absolutely is, and what I was kind of alluding to with this, like, image of the folders in here is that if you, um, if you go into those folders and you start adding that custom styling, you can actually have subfolders of your tenants, and if those tenant folder names match the client code that you put into Yellowfin when you create the client, then it will pick that styling up and those images up and it will um, make it so that anybody who logs in on behalf of that client will actually see that uh, styling. Okay. Other questions? Uh, somebody is asking about my experience with the, um, the Department of Defense and data security and what advice regarding security I can offer to vendors who are looking to deliver embedded analytics with their government solutions specifically um, has my company navigated this train? Yes, we have. Um, we have, um, I did a, a fairly substantial um, implementation in the in the Middle East, um, and uh, um, it has uh, been something that uh, the, the the federal government essentially used in order to um, create a is like a criminal justice system, basically. Um, and then on top of that was all sorts of data analytics that that had to go into it. Uh, so I have navigated that territory. I've actually worked in some of the most secure environments in the world. Um, my experience with them is they're, you know, they're very difficult. Um, my recommendation is that if you're going to use a product like Yellowfin, consider using it in a cloud that has already um, uh, essentially got those security checkboxes that the government's looking for. Uh, for example, uh, Amazon Web Services, if you deploy Yellowfin on Amazon Web Services, it already complies with FedRAMP and it will give you a letter saying it complies with it and you can completely sidestep the investment of that audit. Uh, if you like Yellowfin, um, in its original kind of form was a product that was meant for uh, the banking industry. So it was developed kind of with security in mind from the get-go. And uh, so in, in the... Um, in the deployment of Yellowfin and, its, and in its creation and evolution sense, uh, it has maintained that commitment to security and it uses tools that um, really focus on their, uh, in their maturity, being able to you know, comply with some of those security regulations. However, because you download and install Yellowfin and you host it yourself, um, that's where I recommend possibly using it on a cloud that would 
enable you to um, um, essentially sidestep an audit if you can if you can avoid that expense. Could I share my experience retrieving from Amazon Redshift with Yellowfin? Yeah, sure. It's actually, um, I think it's a it's a great fit. Um, frankly, I do think that you have to have certain design principles with Redshift in place in order to make sure it's going to work with Yellowfin well. Um, so this is getting outside of the world of white labeling a little bit and getting kind of more into data sources and the different types of, of data structures Yellowfin connects well with. One of the things that I think is important to understand about Yellowfin when you're working with it is that if you go, let's just go into kind of a standard Yellowfin format. If you load a dashboard like this one, um, Yellowfin is actually going to that database and is live querying that data. So you're getting completely fresh data when you load this dashboard. Uh, when you do that, it is um, uh, obviously going to interrogate that data every time somebody goes in and loads it. Now, the scaling issue there that you need to design for is that every time somebody goes and looks at one of these dashboards, you're getting queries on your database. So you need to make sure that when you um, use a tool like AWS Redshift, that you've really got a good set of kind of uh, partitioned data so that the questions that are being you know, asked, essentially the interrogation that are being run by everybody who logs in and looks at a dashboard like this are well supported by the way you have partitioned out your data in Redshift. Redshift is so strong at that concurrent uh, querying of well-partitioned data. You want to take full advantage of that if you, if you use a tool like Yellowfin and actually drop Yellowfin on top of Redshift so that it comes back with, um, uh, you know, with good performance and gives a good user experience. So I have another one from Alan that is Yellowfin provides filter books, bookmarks when I use the product. Once we embedded our YF, I can't find how to retrieve the filter bookmarks. I would ask how you're embedding it. Are you, are you just white labeling it or is it um, something you've done with the JavaScript API? Because I'm not sure I've seen those bookmarks in the JavaScript API as a feature. That's a good one, though. I was hoping somebody would come on and uh, stop me, and that's one I haven't seen before. Somebody asked, uh, let's see, what do I prefer, Yellowfin, Tableau, or Power BI? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Look, I mean, one of the things I think is, is important to understand about the whole business intelligence market is that it is, um, uh, it, it, there are a lot of people who have tried to come up with good tools in this space. Most of them are pretty young. Um, Yellowfin, I think, has some advantages in that it has actually been around for a while. Uh, I know that sometimes people kind of want to look at the, the newest, shiniest, you know, coolest, latest tool. Uh, but I think as soon as you start working with tools like that, you realize that their reliability is kind of taking a hit from their immaturity. And so when, you know, you bring Yellowfin into uh, your product, one of the things I think you see about it, one of the experiences I, I feel I have with it is that um, it ha has been around long enough to think of a lot of the features features that you're going to wind up needing. And so Tableau has been around for a while. I think Tableau is a market leader in data discovery. However, I don't think Tableau focused as much as Yellowfin on being able to create a product that generates revenue for your business as much as Yellowfin did. And that was really the business problem. One of three business problems I think Yellowfin was out to solve. And so um, when, when you bring Yellowfin into this white labeling discussion. I think it's a market leader. I think it's it's pretty hard to hard to beat in that area. 
So if you ask me what I would prefer of those three tools, I would say it depends very much on the use case. I think that um, Power BI is designed for a Microsoft friendly stack that is really intended for, uh, I'd say largely internal use cases. I mean, I see people use Power BI all the time for, hey, my CFO needed a report, I need something fast, and you know that's kind of what I'm trying to bring into it. What I see Yellowfin doing is, is a little bit of a deeper story around you're gonna bring something into your department that really shifts your organization's ability to, to access decision support. And, or you're gonna add this to your tool, uh, your, your product in a way that it looks like something your development team spent a lot of time on, but it's really not because you're just integrating you know, Yellowfin into it. So if you want my, my thoughts on those few tools, it's not to say that you know one hands down beats the other. It really depends on what you're trying to do and what, you're, what you want to accomplish as a business with one of these platforms. Okay, so we have, is the dashboard interactive even um, when the visual is based on different data sources? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll bring that up again, actually, because I, I think this is an important point to make about Yellowfin. Uh, when you're in a dashboard like this, these filters over here can be applied to the entire dashboard, even when each report in the dashboard is driven by a different data source. So you don't have to have the same data source even across the dashboard, and you can still apply these filters. Um, you can also apply drill, and that drill can be applied even if the report you clicked on is from a different data source than the report you're deriving from it. And the reason that Yellowfin allows you to do that is it com connects the essentially the click of the uh, category that you clicked on with the, um, uh, semantically, with the uh, um, underlying report that you're drilling to. And so if you click on something, it's passing a filter through from what you clicked on, but it's passing that filter through uh, in, a, in a way that is essentially linked in the, in the GUI. You set that up when you create the report. Okay, well, those are the questions we had so far. Anything else? I have another one on Yellowfin's roadmap. I don't know if, Jackie, you want to take that one? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Um, so regarding the roadmap, um, if you're interested in that, I would encourage you to join our November user group event. Um, we'll be sending out uh, a link to register for that in the newsletter. Um, all that goes out this week, the October newsletter. Um, Yellowfin customers will also be receiving uh, invitations to join the um, user group event starting next week. So uh, please be sure and join us for that. Uh, we'd love to catch you up on everything that's going on with Yellowfin. That's great. So we got another question about the, uh, the interactive features of the dashboard. Um, one thing I, I want to highlight uh, that I think will answer that question really about how you set it up and what that really needs to look like is that when you set up a uh, drill in Yellowfin or when you set up parameters for you know filtering a full dashboard, you start out by going into the filters that are available from reports that you've put on that dashboard and you select which filters you want to actually display on the dashboard for your users. Once you do that, you just go in and say link filters and then for every filter that you've selected to be on the dashboard, you will also link to other fields or filters, either one, uh, of the underlying reports that you want to be able to click on and filter. And so being able to do that means that you don't have to have these come from the same data source, and that's essentially how Yellowfin accomplishes that. Um, in addition to the filters on the dashboard,
we can take a look at a specific Yellowfin report here, and we can take a look at how it approaches drill through. Um, and I think that it'll be kind of telling on exactly why you can tie these to different data sources. So when you're in a Yellowfin report and you've created some kind of uh, content that you actually want to display, but then you also want to make it linkable, you simply tell Yellowfin you want to drill through to other content. And that makes a related content menu available. And then you select a report you want to drill to, even if that report comes from a different data source, and you're simply in this menu over here configuring it to link to you know, that other content that you've selected. Once you do that, um, you can then bring that report into a dashboard. So Yellowfin content development is essentially an act of composition. You start out with connecting to a data source. You create metadata on that data source to describe to Yellowfin what the content is. And then you um, create reports on that. And then you create dashboards on those reports. So it's an act of composition in that at every step, what you're doing is um, adding the description or the content into Yellowfin so that you can bring it all together in something very sophisticated like this. Because of the way that they set that composition up, you can set up those interactive features at multiple levels in that composition. And that's why you can have both the drill through kind of working here across multiple data sources, or you can have the you know, filtering at the dashboard level working for all elements of the dashboard. In addition to that, if you want, you can um, enable something more automated, for example. So if the, you know, the drill you want to do here hasn't been anticipated by the person that developed a report, you can set it up to, you can just enable essentially automated insights, assisted insights, so that if, it, uh, if you want to say compare two categories together, You can do that in the background. Yellowfin will actually go in and slice that data up by every possible dimension. And then uh, it will try to explain the variance you saw between those two categories uh, by every possible dimension that you, can, um, that you can bring in. And so when you do that, it will rank those slices by the variance you see slice to slice and how much they seem to match the variance that you're seeing overall. And as a result, you wind up getting a ranked set of reports um, that uh, essentially help you quickly develop an explanation in a way that would be intractable for an analyst, um, help you quickly develop an explanation for what exactly is causing the change from one period to another or from one category to another. Um, so there was a question about the different versions of, uh, of Yellowfin. So I think that um, the question was about versions. I want to assume it's different versions of Yellowfin, not different versions of report content. But um, I think that probably the best thing I can kind of point to there is that when you go in and you set up, for example, these different uh, styling elements and these custom images and custom CSS folders, one of the reasons Yellowfin put that into place is that when you go and do an upgrade of Yellowfin, um, then you don't want that upgrade to be overriding your underlying content. Um, and so what happens with uh, these folders is whatever you put in there is preserved. And so even though you do an upgrade of Yellowfin and it overrides the entire web application and goes through and recreates everything uh, that it has initially installed, um, it will preserve your styling and your images so it's maintained in that upgrade process. So somebody asked about now the different report versions. There are some features in Yellowfin essentially to maintain report versions. So you can actually say, you know, keep the last five, ten versions or something like that. It's not really quite like a source control so if you, if you want something more like that, I would recommend you consider automatically exporting the content. Content in Yellowfin can be exported as a, uh, essentially as a long form XML document. 
And so it can be migrated between systems like that. And so you can actually commit that to a source control system if you want that level of granularity. However, if you want it just in Yellowfin, when you set Yellowfin up, you can say, I want to keep the last three, five, ten, you know, versions of a report so that um, your history of edits is, is maintained. Other questions? Oh, by the way, if you're looking at this webinar on a smaller device, um, then uh, make sure you can see the Q&A panel um, if, if you don't, uh, the size of your media player may be blocking it, so you may have to scroll in order to get into the question panel. So there's a question about the AI capabilities. I think one of them is the, uh, the assisted insights uh, that I showed you. And so when I get into AI, I like to talk about three areas of Yellowfin, of kind of uh, developing kind of customizations. And so first of all, there's the assisted insights, which is actually pretty straightforward. You essentially enable it. You enable the dimensions that it's going to work on. And then second, They're yellowfin signals. And yellowfin signals um, allow you to identify a metric that you want to keep tabs on. And much like Assisted Insights does with different categories, signals allows you to do with um, that metric. It will slice up in the background as that metric is uh, playing out. It will look at every single one. And if there's any slice that is not behaving according to its recent profile, uh, if, in other words, if it starts to behave differently, then it will create a signal and alert you. And so here, what we're seeing, this is actual real sales data uh, for retail liquor sales for um, the state of Iowa. It's publicly available. And so what we're seeing here is Johnny Walker had a spike. So it's not only showing you, if you consider like really how the underlying data works, um, it's not only showing you um, that uh, that there was some kind of unexpected behavior, but also it's slicing it up by a very specific uh, dimension and value in that dimension. So it's looking at one brand in all of that data. And that one brand actually saw a big spike because of a campaign they ran that was related to the Game of Thrones. Uh, and what you see here in the background is that this is not a hard threshold. This is actually, <coughs> excuse me, um, this is actually a a holistic view of that number that is based on essentially the variance of the data. And so as it gets very quiet and then suddenly behaves in a way that is very different from how it behaved recently, that is where you see something that is, uh, you know, pops up as a signal. You can absolutely have these emailed out to answer another question there. Um, and Yes, you can actually style through a web API or a uh, web service uh, to answer your question about that. Um, I'll pop back over to this demonstration here. This is, um, this is not Yellowfin, just to be clear about it. This is a separate application that is bringing Yellowfin in through an API. And so this application, which would be something like maybe your product or something that is completely you know, custom developed, um, when you log in, it is in the background using, um, there are both SOAP and REST APIs available in Yellowfin, depending on you know what you want to use. I think REST APIs are a little more common and popular these days. 
Um, but, uh, but it has both. And so you can actually use that in order to pull data in and display it in your own container, in your own user interface. Or you can use that JavaScript API that I was mentioning so that the JavaScript SDK allows you to essentially put into uh, uh, your own application a, a kind of jQuery style target of, I want to write this report to this location. And I'll show you an example of that if you want to see it real quick. But it basically looks like here, what I do in Yellowfin is I tend to first test this code out by embedding a Yellowfin report into a Yellowfin dashboard because Yellowfin enables a code mode so you can actually see the code behind its dashboards, which is, I mean, I think for developers integrating into their product is a, is a phenomenal advantage over other platforms that really don't integrate into products as, as frequently as Yellowfin. Um, and then I look at the J JavaScript here and I can go to the JS tab and I see, you know, this is what I've put in. This is code I wrote. So I actually put this JavaScript in in order to write this report ID into a specific um, HTML element in this dashboard. And then I, in that dashboard, I put that HTML element in so that when I'm all said and done, I'm taking a Yellowfin report from the server and I'm actually embedding it in the dashboard. And then I can take that code and turn around and put it in my product. And that eliminates any kind of network issues or you know other kind of single sign-on issues that might be required in order to, um, uh, that might be you know problematic as I'm getting this all set up. It essentially creates a working example very quickly that I where I know the code is verified and I can turn around and put it into you know my product after that. So the signals question uh, I answered and then we perform through. And so you can absolutely perform that styling through those um, different APIs. And that's what we want. And then, uh, yes, you can absolutely use the um, the broadcasting features um, in a in a kind of a white label deployment. Um, it is uh, a little bit more than just putting it possibly in a dashboard, although you can do that. Um, but just to show you what it looks like in the product. So if we go into something like this, assuming this has broadcasting enabled, so you do have to enable the permissions for a user. So security can prevent users, and, and you might want this, by the way, you might want the security to prevent users from exporting in a particular format uh, or exporting at all or broadcasting. But assuming you have that security enabled for the user that's looking at this report, uh, you can go in now and say, I want to broadcast some kind of report here. And I'm going to set that up as maybe an email with an attachment, or I'm going to set it up as an alert. And if you set it up as an alert, the delivery rules that you put in there that your user would have access to if you enabled it, um, allow you to make whether or not Yellowfin sends this out uh, based on the data that you're looking at. And so in other words, if you exceed some constant threshold or if your predictive model comes back and says, you know, this value is, should be an alert, then you can use that in order to make sure it gets sent out. And that actually reminds me, because when I, when I went back on the AI stuff, I only showed you the first two and not the, not the third one. The other one I want to show you on uh, AI capabilities in Yellowfin are your own. So when you, um, when you use a BI tool, one of the frustrations I've had generally with the BI market uh, up until I came to Yellowfin was that they didn't really do a good job of allowing me to call on machine learning models, predictive models, classifiers, uh, forecasting engines, all that kind of stuff that I put together. Um, I either had to write it to the database so they could include it in the report, or I had to somehow or another come up with some trickery to include it in the BI tool. And so Yellowfin actually has got some, I, I think, fairly um, 
understated features in that it has these advanced functions you can go into. You can create calculations. You can, you can go in and select for maybe 50 or so advanced functions. That's great. Um, but they are extensible. And so if you want to go in and drop one of your own advanced functions into the product, it will show up in this menu and you can select it. That allows you to create a something that calls on your predictive model, whether it's through a REST API or PMML, if you use an open standard like that, um, and, and include, incorporate essentially your machine learning model into the report live. Uh, I, I just don't, I don't have a solution for that with another product out there. And so I, I feel like when you talk about AI and Yellowfin, that's one that always needs to be called out. Okay, back to the dashboard now. All right, other questions? Okay, well, Jackie, should we go ahead and wrap it up there? I think so. This has been a great session today. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks for showing up, and uh, hopefully this was uh, uh, valuable for you. And, um, yeah, look forward to uh, doing it again. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye-bye.